This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The Biden administration announced it's going to invest $5 billion over the next five years to install EV chargers all across the U.S. That sounds like a lot, but Gasku reports China is putting the infrastructure in place to be able to charge 20 million electric vehicles by 2025. Part of the plan includes installing chargers at parking spots, building fast charging networks along highways, and opening more battery swapping stations. Currently, China has more than 2.6 million chargers across the country. The U.S. Energy Department is going to invest $8 billion to create at least four hydrogen hubs across the U.S. The network will produce, process, deliver, and store hydrogen. The hubs also have to support different types of hydrogen production, including hydrogen made from fossil fuels, as well as nuclear and renewable energy. And one of the hubs must produce hydrogen for transportation, industry, power generation, and heating. The DOE will talk with companies, environmental groups, and other experts for help on building the hubs and determining how many there should be. There's been a lot of activity involving automakers and their joint ventures in China lately, and now we can add Audi to the list. It was just given approval by government officials for its EV joint venture with FAW. The two companies are spending $3.3 billion to build a new plant that will produce 150,000 electrics a year. Starting in 2024, the plant will make three models, including the Audi e-tron SUV. The German automaker also has plans to build EVs with SAIC and is aiming for electrics to account for one-third of its sales in China by 2025. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Did you know that Jeep sells vehicles in India? Yeah, currently it has the Compass and Wrangler, and soon it's adding an all-new model called the Meridian. It's a three-row crossover with seating for seven that's going to be extremely similar to the Commander that launched recently in South America. While both of those models are built in their respective markets, they're actually based on a stretch version of the Compass platform that's about six inches longer. The Meridian will likely be powered by a turbocharged diesel engine, mated to a nine-speed automatic, and it should launch later this year. Polestar has developed a new bonded aluminum architecture that it will use for its upcoming Polestar 5, an electric four-door GT. Using structural adhesives to bond parts together is nothing new, but it sounds like Polestar is getting rid of most of the welds and gluing the body and white together instead. Spot welds are a great way of making a body, but they only provide fastening strength where the weld is at. With structural adhesives, the fastening strength is continuous along every flange and the structure ends up being stronger. That means designers can use smaller flanges and thinner material, which means it's lighter too. In fact, Polestar says the five will weigh less than cars in smaller segments, yet have greater torsional rigidity than a supercar. Another advantage is that Polestar doesn't have to design open areas in its body in white to accommodate big welding robots during manufacturing. That means it doesn't have to compromise the design, which also results in a lighter, stronger structure. And that's going to allow the Polestar 5 to look more like the car that inspired it, the Precept concept, which has won all kinds of styling awards. Technology company Mobileye has big plans to expand into autonomy. Plans to launch robo-taxis in Israel and Germany this year, AV delivery vehicles in the U.S. next year, and it just announced a deal to put autonomous shuttles on roads in the U.S. in 2024. It's partnering with Ben Teller EV Systems, who will provide the shuttles, which are built on a modular electric platform and seat around a dozen people, and Beep, who will handle deployment and operations systems. 
Mobilize contributing the self-driving system, which is level four capable. At first, it plans to have a few hundred shuttles in operation that will be limited to 35 miles an hour in geofenced areas. But the plan is to expand to 10,000 to 15,000 globally in the future. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Even though it's only shown a few teaser images of the vehicle and it doesn't go into production until 2024, Fisker is now taking $250 reservations for its second EV, the Pair. The five-seater currently has a starting price of $29,900 before taxes and incentives. But there aren't a whole lot of details about the model. We do know it will be built by Foxconn in Ohio starting in 2024 with a minimum production capacity of 250,000 units a year. And speaking of reservations for new cars, Acura will start taking pre-orders for the all-new Integra in March. Acura hasn't shared many details about the model, but it will come with a turbocharged one and a half liter engine mated to a six speed manual and have a starting price around 30 grand. That's about all we know for now, but Acura says it will share more details soon. By a show of hands, who hates Lexus's spindle grill? Now I know I can't see you, but I bet there's a lot of hand raisers out there. Well, if you're one of them, you're in luck. Based on a number of images released by the automaker showing off some of its future BEV products, it looks like it's starting to go away from the design feature. You can still see remnants of it in its SUVs, but it's much less pronounced in the BEV Sport and BEV sedan concepts. By the way, we see a little LFA and Supra inspiration in that BEV Sport, which Lexus says could do 0 to 60 in the low 2 second range and exceed 430 miles of range thanks to solid state batteries. The DS brand, which is part of Stellantis, is giving one of the plug-in hybrid versions of its sedan, the DS9 E10 250, a bigger battery pack. It's going from 11.9 kilowatt hours up to 15.6, which increases range to 61 kilometers or about 38 miles on the WLTP test cycle. There's also an all-wheel drive version of the DS9 PHEV, which combines a 200 horsepower gas engine with two electric motors and a number of unique chassis upgrades, but it still uses the smaller battery. And it's also a little slower than you might think, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.6 seconds. I was also a little shocked at the pricing, having never looked it up before. The less powerful version starts at 58,000 euros in France, which is roughly $66,000, while the all-wheel drive PHEV starts at 67,500 euros or over $76,500. The EV revolution is upon us, but the internal combustion engine is going to be around for decades to come, especially in developing countries. But how long can automakers hold on to their IC engines and what will they have to do to keep their engines relevant as long as they can? That's going to be the topic for AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. We'll have engine expert James Martin from IHS Market on the show. So join John and Gary to talk about one of the greatest challenges traditional automakers face. How do they plan to wind down their ICE operations? But that brings us to the end of today's show. Please like, comment, or subscribe. It really does help us out. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.